Spring Boot 3.2 introduced a new REST client. This is a way to talk to other services via HTTP, and it's an improvement over its predecessor, the REST template. Now, I've done a video on this, uh, the first look at the REST client, but this was really an introduction to it. And since then, I've had some time to dive into the REST client, really take a look at the internal workings of it, and I've got a lot of questions from you guys on different scenarios on how to use the REST client for this or for that. And so what we're going to do over the next X number of videos is cover those topics. So if you have questions about the REST client or things we talk about today, please do me a favor and leave those in the comments below and we'll see if we can't address those. My name is Dan Vega. I'm a Spring Developer Advocate at Broadcom and I make videos around Java, Spring or anything else that kind of piques my interest. So if you're interested in that, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and support this channel. When it comes to the REST client, today I wanna to talk about the underlying HTTP client. We'll get into what that means in a second, but basically the REST client is the API. There is a mechanism underneath the hood that actually makes the HTTP call. We have a default client that we use underneath the hood, but there is a mechanism for figuring out which underlying HTTP client we should use. And you can also swap those out. So if you don't want to use the default one and you want to use something like the JDK HTTP client, you can do so. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We'll take a look at what clients are available to you and how do you go ahead and swap one out for another. So I think this will make an interesting video because to make some of those changes that you guys have had questions about, you may need to swap out the client and then configure that client to do different things like set a timeout uh, on a connection. So with that, let's head over to start.spring.io, create a new project and we'll talk through this. All right, so here we are on start.spring.io. I'm gonna choose a new Maven project. I'm gonna choose the latest version of Spring Boot, which is 3.2.2. You wanna be on at least 3.2 for this to work. And then we'll go ahead and fill in some metadata about this project. We'll say dev.danvega. The artifact is going to be, let's call it REST client uh, samples because I wanna use this project for all future videos as well. Uh, so anything that we're covering with the REST client, I'll keep in this repository. Uh, you'll be able to find that on GitHub and I'll put that link in the description below. I'm gonna choose Java 21. You can easily choose Java 17 if you want. And all I'm gonna do is bring in the Spring web dependency. With that, I'll go ahead and generate that, download the zip, open that up in IntelliJ. But before I head over there, I just wanna check out the REST client documentation. So if you go over to the Spring reference uh, documentation and look under integration and under REST clients, uh, you'll come to this page. It will talk about the REST client, the web client, the REST template, HTTP interfaces. We're going to cover a lot of this on this channel. We have before, but I'll keep going over some of this stuff if you're new to it. Once you get the REST clients, on the right-hand side here, we're going to choose the client request factories. And this is what we're talking about today. So to execute the actual HTTP request, REST client uses HT a client HTTP library. These libraries are adapted via the client request factory interface. So that's important. We'll look at that interface in a minute. Various implementations of that are available. So we have something like the JDK, we have HTTP components, which is a part of Apache, we have Jetty, we have Reactor, we have a simple client HTTP request factory as a default. Here's where it gets important. If no request factory is specified when the REST client was built, it will use Apache or the Jetty HTTP client. So it looks on the class path, and if it can find one of those, it's going to use those. Um, otherwise, it's going to use the, uh, if the java.net HTTP module is loaded, it will use Java's HTTP client. Finally, it will resort to a simple default. We'll see what that default is, but uh, basically this is using the uh, HTTP URL connection underneath the hood. So if you don't want to use that, as the default, and you wanna to switch to something like JDK uh, HTTP client, how do you do it? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. So now that we have our project, let's head over to IntelliJ and take a look at how we do this. All right, so I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna create a new Java class called the post service. I'm gonna to talk to JSON placeholder services. I've done this in previous videos, but it's just a public URL where we can go ahead and access some information and get some JSON back. So what I need to do to create a new um, REST client is I'm going to start with a, a variable here. I'm going to say private final REST client. So REST client, and I'll call it REST client. 
Um, whoops, so I have a uh, shortcut that does that and I'll show you in a second. So you wanna create a constructor here. I'm gonna select none and we'll click okay. And now I need to create a new instance of this REST client. There's a couple different ways that I can do it. If I look at REST client, uh, if I look in here, there is, um, so we have some information here. Here are the static factory methods. So we can call the create method. We can call create with uh, a base URL. We can, uh, we have create, we have this builder here. So there is a static rest client dot builder. So we could just use that, uh, which would be fine. There's also an interface. So if you look at the interface for builder, um, this will, if you look at the implementations of this, there is a default rest client builder. So if we just declare here that we want the rest client dot builder, we are basically asking for anything that there is an implementation of. Now there's only one, there's that default one that we create by default. And so we don't have to actually use any of those static factory methods because there's already an instance of that. So I can say this dot rest client is equal to builder dot build. And now we have a rest client that we can use. Now this is something I do a lot. So I love IntelliJ's live templates. I can just go ahead and say, give me a REST client, and I'm able to create that REST client. Same thing we just walked through. Now let's just do this. Let's uh, go ahead and contact the JSON placeholder service and see what happens with the default uh, HTTP client library. So I'm going to set a base URL, and we're going to say that we're talking to JSON placeholder service and that needs a closing. And then I just want a way to get back a list of posts. I'm just gonna call this uh, a string for now because I don't have a representation of a post, which is fine. And I'll just say find all. And then in here, we will return the rest client dot get. Uh, what is this saying? This is from a previous one. We actually just wanna look at posts. Um, We're going to retrieve that and return a body of string. So this, should work. If we go ahead and uh, try to test this out, I'm going to use a command line runner. So I'll say at bean, command line runner, command line runner. Let's get our post service. We'll call this, let's call it post service. And then in here, we will return args and say post service dot find all dot var. That is all of our posts. And now we can go ahead and just print those out. So let's go ahead and try to run this. Uh, it should return 100 posts, but in this case, it's just a JSON string. And we have an error here uh, because we didn't tell Spring about this component. We got a mark with at service or at, at component. And now this should go ahead and pick this up in dependency injection. And there's our JSON payload of all the posts. Now, one thing in here uh, that we don't see is we don't we don't have some logging around this. Like I, okay, a, a request went out using the REST client, and we talked to this other service. But you know, when I'm in a browser, I'm able to open up the Dev Tools and see uh, the request, the response, all the headers, any you know, all of the data associated with that call. And I'd like to be able to see this here. So I'm going to make a quick change so that we can see what is actually happening under, underneath the hood. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set a logging level for a particular package. Uh, we'll say sun.net.www.protocol.http. Uh, that looks good. I'll even kind of narrow it down even more to the HTTP URL connection because I know that's what we're using by default. So if I go ahead and set this level to trace, now when we make this call, we should get a whole lot of more information in here. So now if we look in here, we can see that um, everything that's going on with the HTTP client. So we see that there are things like, hey, there's a proxy selector. Uh, here's the proxy used. Here's the class that was being used. Here's the request that is sent. So you can see, um, actually this one is the response 200 OK, and you see all of the headers that come back. Um, this JSON placeholder service has like a, um, a max connection. Where do we have it? There's somewhere in here that says, hey, you can only uh, rate limit, right? So you can only call this thing so many times before we kind of block you, right? So now I'm able to get more information about what's going on. So I know that by default, I'm using the HTTP URL connection. So then my question was, okay, 
if I need to like configure something, how do I do that? And we can do this um, one, one way here. So right here where I create this REST client, right before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new client for this REST client to use, an underlying client, right? Now there are a bunch. Um, so I mentioned the, uh, let's just take a look at the JDK HTTP client request factory. If we jump into that, all of these implement this client HTTP request factory. So if you're gonna use something to replace the underlying library, it needs to implement this. If we go ahead and look at this, we'll see the implementations for this are things like the Apache HTTP components. We have the JDK, Jetty, there's one for mocking on the testing side, Reactor, and then there's a simple uh, HTTP client which uses the URL connection underneath the hood. So now we know how we can kind of create one of these. So I'm gonna say, I wanna replace this with the JDK client HTTP request factory. And I'll just call this request factory and it will create a new JDK, JDK client request factory. Now what I can do is start to configure the underlying HTTP client. So one thing I might wanna do is say HTTP request factory dot set read timeout. Like maybe we know calls internally take a little bit longer and this particular app isn't for customers, right? We know things are going on underneath the hood. We could say, uh, I wanna go ahead and set that to 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. So now that I've configured a new client, I just need to set it here on the REST client. And we can do that by request factory. So we can say request factory and I can pass in that request factory here and now it will use that. So. Now, even with this logging on, so let's just turn this back on. If I turn this on and I go ahead and rerun this application, we should see that we don't have any trace information and that's because we're no longer using that uh, default HTTP client. So now, how you know, I wanna get some more information about what's going on in my application. So my initial thought was to come in here and turn on logging for that particular thing, but that is not how the JDK HTTP client works. It works a little bit differently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't dug into the logging aspect of it, but if you want to turn on logging for the JDK uh, HTTP client, we need to set a system property. Now we can go in IntelliJ and set this um, in our like run configuration. So we can come in here and go to run configuration and say, go ahead and add a VM option. You could do that there. You can also just do it by setting a property. Now I know you wouldn't do this in a real production application, but I'm just doing this for a demo. So I could say system.setProperty.jdk HTTP client uh, log, and we're gonna set this to all just so we can get all of that logging information. So I'm gonna go ahead and rerun this, and you saw some information fly by. Now we're getting a little bit more about what's going on. So we see some trace information about the uh, cipher here. Then we go in and we should see some about the request. So our request to uh, slash post is a git. Here's the method, path, scheme, the user agent. So we can see we're using Java 21 and the Java HTTP client. Now we can go in here and this all happens and then we see the response. So we were able to get that information. I think this is really helpful, uh, at least especially in development, uh, to be able to see what's going on, right? Like I wanna see, just like the on the front end, if I have the dev tools open, I can see the request and the response. I wanna be able to see that here. So um, that's one way that you can do that. Now. Again, there are other ones that you can use. So if I wanted to create a simple client HTTP request factory and do that, and uh, we'll do this in another video, but now you can say, uh, let's go ahead and set the proxy. I know that was one of the questions I got a lot, which was, hey, I need to be able to set a proxy to make a call. So every call goes through this proxy. That's one way that you can do it. Now, I. You know, I'm still kind of diving into this, but different clients offer different um, properties or different ways to set different things. So that's one of my, that's been one of my challenges so far. But again, uh, I think this is really helpful. So that's it. I wanted to show you a quick way to kind of change the underlying HTTP client when using REST client because a lot of the things that a lot of the questions that have come up 
have to do with the underlying HTTP client, things like changing proxies, uh, enabling and disabling the SSL handshake that happens, setting timeouts. These things are all kind of controlled by the mechanism that makes the HTTP call. So I really hope this was helpful. If it was, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding, friends. Hey.